Hi everyone, good morning. Hello. Hi, Christine. Hi, everyone. Happy Monday. Good morning. So, how are you? Good morning, Gail. Thank you. How are you? I was saying you got to take a picture of your porch that you just are making your sitting area, which is so nice. Let me see what's going on here with these notifications. All right. Good morning, Caitlin. Hi, everybody. It's Monday. Yay. <laughs> How was your weekend? My sister, my two kids, and I went out to of all places, Marie Callender's last night. I had a group on. <laughs> Hi, Barbara. So if you had not had Marie Callender's in a while, like that's the kind of restaurant we went to when my parents were living long, 25 years ago. <laughs> But we went and the kids had soft tacos and Gail and I had salad and I had a soup and they have this cornbread they're known for, right? Yep, so um, had some of that. And um, what did you all do this weekend? We also went back to a service at Bethel. They opened up one of their campuses that we used to be a part of for two years called Twin View, and we went to the service there. So um, anyway, I know their cornbread is pretty good. So here we are, <clears throat> amplified version, almost done with Exodus. We're on chapter 39. We only have one chapter left. I mean, one for, yeah, <laughs> one chapter left. That's what I was trying to say. And um, then we are going to do something Thursday morning. Um, I'll tell you about this book, excuse me, in a little bit. Alrighty, yo, so we're going to get started. Oh, you took the dog to the beach. How nice. So good. Okay, here we go. So we left off in verse 22 yesterday. I mean, Saturday. Yesterday was Sunday, so we didn't meet yesterday, but we left off. Um, oh, and you were lazy, Barbara. Oh, apple crisp. Nice and granola. I love. I used to love granola. <clears throat> In my early twenties, I worked at Calvary Chapel Conference Center, at Bible College, and um, they were known for their granola. <laughs> so we ate it and ate it a lot. Okay, here we go. And he made the robe of the ephod of woven work, all of blue. And there was an opening for the head. 
in the middle of the rope, like the hole in a coat of mail with a binding around it, that it should not be torn. On the skirts of the rope, they made pomegranates of blue and purple and scarlet stuff and twined linen. And they made bells of pure gold and put them around between the pomegranates upon the shirts of the rope, a bell and a pomegranate, a bell and a pomegranate round about on the skirts of the robe for ministering as the Lord commanded Moses. Um, when we're reading through today, and um, even previous to this, when we read the first part of the chapter, I went through and counted. There are nine times that just this chapter says, as the Lord commanded Moses. I was listening to some prophetic words last night from Dutch Sheets. You know this man? I think my sister does. Um, very strong and mature prophet, but what I really appreciate about him is the fact that he prayer walks. Something that I find intriguing and I feel like the Lord keeps calling me deeper into this and I've got these feet of mine um, contrasting the call of the Lord so they my feet if you don't know I have some problems with them um, with my feet in the last year so walking or hiking or anything I had to stop playing pickleball and mostly swimming recently and doing things that don't require a lot of action on my feet. But anyway, um, the prayer walks are where God speaks to him <clears throat> a lot of the times. And what I'm bringing this, why I'm bringing this up is because the Lord commanded Moses. We have to be with the Lord <clears throat> to hear what he's saying to us, right? And then sometimes he speaks to us as individual words for ourselves, but he can also speak to us for entire groups of people, entire nations, depending upon our trustworthiness. And here is something where we see God speaking to Moses and um, he is able to say, as the Lord has commanded Moses or as the Lord <clears throat> speaks to Moses, he can put it in one chapter nine times. And um, what I took away, even though I was so encouraged by all the prophetic words, what I personally took away from listening last night was how many times Dutch Sheets stopped and said in his messages that he would be Asking the Lord, a simple thing, simple phrase. So Lord, what do you want me to do? I just, I, my spirit was just leaping as I was receiving this instruction from the Holy Spirit. He said, it's as simple as that, Laura. Walk with me and ask me what you're supposed to do. So I... <laughs> I tried doing that um, when we went to to um, Oroville a couple of weeks ago and we were delivering the Bibles and the, the children's books and the waters and my sister had brought some apples and we had some things for this place. And as I was driving, <clears throat> trying not to get upset about the smoke, I kept thinking, Lord, what do you want us to do? And um, it just has to become this place with me and him and I hope for I I tell you this to impart this to you as well where we are constantly in union with the Lord saying what do you want me to do as you hear his instruction or as you're waiting to hear his instruction Lord what do you want me to do <clears throat> and I, I tell you it's the adventure of God it's something that I was noticing with Dutch Sheets last night that 
he would often tell him to go do things that he really didn't want to do or he thought were kind of ridiculous. And then he would encounter an angel. <laughs> so what are you going to say to that? Um, and on another note, which I'm getting way off the Bible here, but we're going to get right back. I realized, I haven't said this out loud yet, but I realized that sometimes what I'm trying to describe with feeding the homeless for me in this journey I've been on now for several months, I feel like um, I feel like I'm encountering angels here and there. I, I will tell you one story that I told my sister and she looked at me like, are you sure? <laughs> but early on, early on, months ago, I gave a ride to someone. I would never do this. The Lord, I felt the Lord said, pick up this young woman. She was walking along the road. Give her a ride. Um, give her some food. And... I took her, and it was close to our house, and I only drove her about two or three blocks. And then I turned the car around, and I looked and looked all around me in the back of me, and she was gone when I after I dropped her off. And I just, I was stunned. I, I just said, Lord, what was that? <laughs> and um, it was kind of like a, just an act of obedience. I never saw her again. I don't know if that was an angel. I don't know if the Lord, because she told me her story and in the car and super honest with me really quickly. But there was just that mm, feeling inside. Like, what is this? So those are just personal experiences that I don't like. To, I'm not going to build a doctrine on that or anything, but I just wanted to say all this that nine times in this chapter, it says, as the Lord commanded Moses. So as he's speaking to us today, or he's, as he's wanting to develop that kind of relationship with us, so we'll have something to say to, to someone else. Let's be listening. Let me see what you guys are saying. Oh, you, some of you do know Dutch, and you do love him. Okay, good, yay. I do not know what if I have plantar fasciitis. I have neuropathy. Um, yes, whoopie do. Yes, I'm so grateful for everything that the Lord is doing. Okay, so let's move on here. Verse 27, and they made the long and sleeve tunics woven of fine linen for Aaron and his sons. And the turban and the ornamental caps of fine linen and the breeches of fine twine linen, the girdle or sash of fine twine linen and blue and purple and scarlet embroidery as the Lord commanded Moses. They made the plate of the holy crown of pure gold and wrote upon it an inscription like the engravings of a signet, holy to the Lord. They tried it, tried to it, Sorry, they tied to it a lace of blue to fasten it on the turban above as the Lord commanded Moses. Thus all the work of the tabernacle of the tent of meeting was finished <clears throat> according to all that the Lord commanded Moses. So the Israelites had done. And they brought the tabernacle to Moses, the tent and all of its furnishings clasps, its frames, boards, its bars, its pillars, its sockets, and bases. They're going to come and show him all this work that they've done. And he is going to be the inspector, so to speak, of all of it to see if they have done what the Lord has said. And it's just what a joyful time. It's like bringing him your, bringing your professor your, your thesis after all this hard work. And you're going to get the grade. Um, verse 34, and the covering of ram skins made red and the covering of dolphin or porpoise skins 
and the veil of the screen, the ark of the testimony, its poles and the mercy seat, <clears throat> excuse me, the table and all its utensils, the showbread, the bread of the presence, the pure gold lampstand and its lamps, the lamp set in order, all of its utensils and the oil for the light, the golden altar, the anointing oil, the fragrant incense, and the hanging for the door of the tent, the bronze altar and its grate of bronze, its pole and all of its utensils, the labor and its base, the hangings of the court, its pillars and sockets or bases and the screen for the court gate, its cords and pegs, and all the utensils for the service of the tabernacle, for the tent of meeting, of God with his people. This is where the Shekinah glory came in that we were talking about. The finely worked vestments for ministering in the holy place, the holy garments for Aaron the priest, and the garments of his sons to minister as priests. According to all that the Lord had commanded Moses, so the Israelites had done all the work, and Moses inspected all the work he inspected it all, and behold, they had done it as the Lord had commanded. And so when they had done it, Moses blessed them. What a reward. What an incredible reward that they received the blessing from Moses as they had finished their work. Don't you want to hear the Lord say to you someday, well done, thou good and faithful servant enter thou into the kingdom that i prepared for you well done well done well done well done well done just one moment let me get the dog situated <laughs> um let's see what you're saying barbara Oh, yes. You are going to speak to your adult children. Oh, this is so amazing. If you want to tell us when you come to the time that you're doing it, we can be praying for you. I have such an urgency in my heart towards my children as well, and I don't feel a release yet. I know what you mean. So, um, that's the end of chapter 39, and tomorrow we'll start chapter 40. And then I just want, yeah, the dogs are saying amen. Um, over the weekend, oh my goodness, there was such a dog snafu, snafu. <laughs> Won't talk about that, but um, yeah, I do want to talk about this. I do want to talk about this um, Zoom call we're going to do. The part of the Zoom call will be, on, which we'll do on Thursday. Oh, wait a minute. I have to go to the doctor on Thursday. I'm just remembering that. Um, maybe we'll do a, like a 7.30 on Thursday. That'll be okay. And then we'll be for sure done. <clears throat> yeah, I have. You're going to check my skin if you want to be praying for me. I'm going to, well, I have something right there. I don't know what norm, regular doctor is referring me out. So anyway, so probably we'll have to be on a little earlier. <clears throat> <clears throat> so um, Thursday, I want to share with you um, some excerpts from this book and so we can pray for the state of California. And I'm going to do a little bit of that right now so that you can see what this is. This is Dr. Henry Fellaini's book, or Fellaini. I don't know how to pronounce his name. He and his wife have a ministry here in um, California. And he has thoroughly, he's an older gentleman. I think he, I don't know his age. I'll just say 80 arbitrarily. I don't know. He has thoroughly researched history, both church history and the 
Mexico's California history. And it's in this book. And um, he's contending for the state of California in this book. And um, so I heard about him a couple years ago. He, when I got it in the mail, they included this booklet called The Prophetic Symbolism in California. I'm just going to tell you what it contains in here. I haven't read the whole thing yet. Um, it's talking about, um, well, it's talking about American history as well. You know, how we started as a nation. And this book is written like, I mean, it's really easy to read. There's only like a couple of pages for each chapter. Um, but today, just to wet your taste for Thursday, I will, um, I'll give you a little portion of what he talks about in here and why he feels California is, as California goes, so does the nation. And so here's, um, some of the things that we can be proud of if we live here in California. He has verified the following things about the state. <clears throat> that they have, this state of California has the most global influence, Christian influence in the world. We have the biggest population in the 50 states. We have 36,700,000 people at the writing of this book. We have the biggest budget, but that was in 2007. And things have changed. We have the biggest international export distinction. We have, we are, the agricultural capital of the world. We have the most food production anywhere in the world. This is also the land of milk and honey. As the nation's top milk producer, California is also a top honey producer. It is intermittently the number one honey producer. Um, Let me see what else is fun. We have the biggest winery in the world here in Modesto is the Gallo Wineries. That is the biggest one in the world. We have the most wine production in the world. 90% of the wine is here. <clears throat> most vineyards in the, in the nation, in the United States, over 90%. We are the raisin capital of the world, which is in Fresno. We are the olive capital of the world, which is in Corning, and olive oil is used for anointing oil. We are the garlic capital of the world, and you know that's in Gilroy. We are the cowboy capital of the world in Oakdale. We are the mule capital of the world in Bishop High Country Packers and Guides are in Bishop, California. We have the biggest gold vein in the world. It is the half mile wide by 120 mile long California mother load. We have the biggest living things in the world, which are the California redwoods. We have the oldest living things in the world, which are the bristlecone pine trees. We have the highest waterfall in our continent here in Yosemite, over 3,000 feet. Um, and I'm going to stop there, except I'll say we had the first McDonald's here. <laughs> I don't know if we should be proud of that. That's the largest and fastest food chain ever in the world. So um, when everyone poo-poos California and says it should just drop off into the ocean, um, the prophet Chuck Pierce, he mentions him in this book, says that, you know, we should never say that about the state of California because, as I'll share with you tomorrow, some of the most important
significant movements of God were right here in California. That would be Azusa Street, uh, the beginning of the Four Square Church with Amy Simple McPherson, um, the Jesus Movement, and uh, Bill Bright's Campus Crusade for Christ, and those are just four of many, many more. So I just want to say we cannot forget the state that some of us live in, and we cannot forget what God has done here because we have one um, government right now that is not exactly doing a good job. So um, let me see what you all are saying over here, if anybody else is commenting. Thank you so much. Got to keep California pure. That's right. Okay, so everybody on board, if you can, for the next few days as we finish Exodus, and bless you all as you and I both learn how to hear from the Lord, and we begin to ask him, what do you want me to do? And then as the Lord commanded Moses, so he would command us and we would be people that he trusts to speak words for our sphere of influence. And then for as he trusts us more and more, we can grow that word. All right. Well, I pray that you all have a very good day. Love you all, and I will see you tomorrow. <clears throat> all right. Bye-bye, everyone.